Hello everyone, Christina Werner here. Welcome to another video on my YouTube channel. Today I'm using the Spa Day Stamps and Dies for Mom Elephant to create two cards. Now the idea behind these cards came while I was sketching out a plan for the cards. I thought, you know what, what if I had dramatic negative space on each card? So very small image and one end of the card and keep the rest of it kind of blank. That was the idea behind it. And it's a really easy way to kind of build a scene, but not have it be really time involving. So I'm using some watercolor paper from Alta New. Uh, this is just for the no line watercoloring of the images. Then I'll switch to some different watercolor paper for the backgrounds. But I'm using some no line coloring ink from Honeybee. And I actually stamped the images twice so that I would have an easier time seeing all the lines that are stamped. Uh, one stamping is probably good enough for most applications, but I wanted the lines to show up a little bit better on camera. So now I'm using a bunch of different colors of Distress Ink and I'm doing no line watercoloring, which means that um, I'm kind of creating the lines by making sure I have a lot of contrast at each edge of each individual shape. So here we go, I've sped up the video process and enjoy all the painting. After I finished painting both images, I used the coordinating dies to cut them out. And I did want to mention that on the bubble bath image, I started painting the bubbles in sort of a colorful iridescent fashion. And then I decided to not do that at all. Um, so there's one little section of bubbles that have a little more color on it, but it's not really that noticeable in the end. For this one with the bunny and a towel, um, I'm going to use sort of a radiating circle pattern and I'm going to use colors that are very, very pale for right behind the bunny and then as they radiate out, they'll become more intense. So I'm using the Nested Circles die set from Simon Says Stamp just as a guide and then once the circles aren't big enough anymore, I just used a pencil and kind of drew on some circle shapes. So I'm going to be painting these stripes so it's not really important if they're completely straight or not. Starting out with the color Saltwater Taffy and I'm using the, the reinker this time because I am painting such a large area and I'm going to be using more intense color as it radiates out. I thought it would just be easier to kind of mix colors and get a nice coating of color if I use the reinkers because they are much more concentrated than smushing the ink pads onto the surface. So I watered the saltwater taffy down a lot, um, made it very diluted for those first couple of colors, and then I brought it in with a little bit stronger color coming in right here. 
And then I started to mix it with some seedless preserves. And this is going to start transitioning the color to a deeper shade. This is very similar to my method that I use when I do faux, uh, what's the word, dip dye, faux dip dye, where you're just doing a line of color and then adding a tiny bit of color, trying to transition to the next. So it's very similar to that faux dip dye, except now we're painting and radiating circle shapes. So I hit that with my heat tool to dry it and then I set it aside. And I'm going to work on the background for the bunny in the bathtub. So I'm placing it on some five by seven watercolor paper uh, just to get some spacing. And I'm going to be stamping the greeting for my scene right above the bunny. And I want it to look like it's in a picture frame. So I'm just going to be stamping it in that same no line coloring ink from Honeybee. And that's just a placeholder. But because I'm going to come back and stamp it later, I'm going to leave the stamp in my Misty. And after I've done all of my painting, I'll come back and stamp the greeting again and heat emboss it. I'm using a T-square ruler to draw a horizon line. And I want this to look kind of like there's um, a floor, a baseboard, maybe some uh, detail on the wall, and then just the color of the wall. I want it to be really, really simple and not distract from the actual bunny itself. But I also wanted there to be a little bit of interest so it finishes off the scene. I used the ruler to draw a frame shape or a rectangle around that greeting. And then I plan to actually draw on a frame, like a more ornate frame, once I have the initial painting done. So I'm just getting all the spacing right, figuring out if it looks okay. And then I taped it to a board and I started painting. Starting with the color Walnut Stain and I watered it and, uh, down and diluted it quite a bit. I put a nice flat wash of that at the very bottom. Now I'm taking some milled lavender and I'm diluting that quite a bit as well. I wanted a very pale shade for the wall and I'm painting around that greeting area and just filling the entire area with this color. I then took some pumice stone, diluted that quite a bit as well, and just adding this to the wall. I wanted the portions of the baseboard that uh, would have the light hitting it the most to be plain white. So this area of the wall reads white so that I can have the highlight. I then grabbed a little bit more of that walnut stain and it did some strokes of the color coming down um, and kind of uh, splaying out at the sides for some perspective. And that just adds a little bit of texture to the floor. I then grabbed some sealess preserves. This is from the reinker because I wanted the color really, really strong. Planning to do some embossing powder over the top. So I needed that color around the words to be super dark. I'm stamping my greeting once again that I already had in my Misty. So it's going to go right over that area where it was before. And I've stamped that in Versamark and then coating it in some yeah, heat embossing powder. This is alabaster embossing powder from Brutus Monroe. So now I have a nice bright white greeting. I decided to make the frame a gold color and it would mimic the same gold that I used on the feet of the bathtub. So I'm using this gold shade from Yuli Watercolors and I decided to do kind of like a little scroll pattern on the top and bottom of the frame. And this is just going to give it a little bit of height, a little bit more interest. And then on the sides, I did just a little swoop shape just to give it um, a little bit more depth on the side. So it looks a bit thicker and it kind of mimics the ornate pattern on the top and bottom of the frame. Now these are not perfect, they're definitely hand drawn on there, but I think it really lends itself to the whimsical look of the card. I used the A2 layers dies from Waffle Flower to cut out the radiating circle shape, and then I used the A7 layers dies to cut out my room to go behind the bathtub. I then grabbed some, some more of that milled lavender and I used the two square ruler as a guide. I didn't like go right up against the ruler because then you might get a little bit of drag when you pull the ruler away. Um, so instead I just use that as a guide to make sure that I was painting my stripes uh, perfectly vertical. And this is just going to give the illusion of possibly some boards on the wall or even wallpaper. 
and then put some foam adhesive on the back of my watercolor panel and put it directly down onto a five by seven card base. And this is the basic design of my card. All I have to do is put my little bunny in a bathtub right on top and we have a finished card. I'm gonna set this one aside while I work on the second card. I put some adhesive all on the back of my watercolor panel and then adhered it directly to an A2 card. Now I'm going to take my little bunny and I've put some foam adhesive on the back and I'm put it right over that area in the corner. And then to finish off this card, I just use some VersaFine Onyx Black ink to stamp the greeting off to the left of the bunny. This is a very, very simple card. It's not really even a scene per se. It just has a nice pattern on the background that really brings your eye to the focal point of the bunny. So those are my cards for today. I hope this gives you an idea of something you can do with some of your kind of animal or people stamps for when you're building a scene. Go ahead and give it dramatic negative space. Put that animal or person far away from the corners and just let it breathe a little bit. Thanks so much for watching today. I'll be back soon with another card video. Thanks for watching.